Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com. Today we're going to make Welsh cakes. Welsh cakes are really a scone, only instead of baking them in the oven, we're going to cook them either on an electric griddle or a frying pan or electric frying pan. And what this does is it, it uh, makes the cake have a really nice golden brown outer crust, yet inside they're really nice and soft. So, uh, like a scone, I'm just going to make these by uh, hand. I'm not going to use a mixer. So in a large bowl, place uh, two cups, that's 260 grams of all-purpose white flour, or you may know that as plain flour. And to that, I'm going to add a third of a cup, 65 grams of granulated white sugar. And then two teaspoons of baking uh, powder. Forgot a little sugar there and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And then the flavoring. Um, some people don't add any spices. I make them the way my, this is my mother's recipe and this is how she uh, flavored them. With a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a quarter of a teaspoon of ground mace. Now you can um, leave out the mace, you could uh, just add the cinnamon, you could add a little mixed spice or I mean, really, you can kind of do whatever you want with the spices. So then just um, choosing the wire whisk, whisk that together. You want to make sure that all the uh, spices and the baking powder are really mixed into the flour. And then you will need a half a cup, that's 113 grams of cold, make sure it's cold, uh, butter. You can use salted or unsalted, either one. And cut them into little cubes like this, because what we're gonna do is cut it, the butter into the flour till it's like really um, coarse crumbs. So I'm using a pastry blender. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you could use two knives and just kind of cut, or you could even just use your fingertips. Now, the other, if you're kind of short on time, you could put all of this in your food processor and just pulse it and add the butter and then pulse it until the uh, butter gets into little small pieces. That's one way if you wanted to uh, not do it by hand or if you're in a rush because that's a little faster. Okay, there we go. So this is kind of what you're looking for. It's coarse crumbs. Now a few big uh, pieces of butter, don't worry about it, that's okay. So now what I'm gonna do, again, like I said, I'm making them how my mom always made them. That's, uh, so I'm adding a third of a cup, that's 80 milliliters of currants. You could use um, raisins for this or you could use like dried cherries, dried um, cranberries. And also, something a little different, I'm adding a quarter of a cup, that's 60 milliliters of um, the candied mix peel. If you don't like, some people do not like this, I, I love it, but um, you could leave it out and maybe just up the uh, currants to a half a cup, 120 milliliters. You could also add like a little grated um, orange zest or lemon zest, that would even be nice. Just like a scone, you can really um, play with this and do different flavors. Okay, so now for our liquid ingredients. We just need one large egg, and I'm just going to lightly beat that with a whisk. And you will also need about a quarter of a cup 60 milliliters of milk. You can use whole or like a reduced fat of 2% or even a skim. So I'm just gonna add that. I'll just make a little well in the center here. Add the egg. Now, um, we don't want a, like as wet of a dough, as soft of, as a dough as uh, a scone because we are gonna roll these out and cut them into little uh, rounds. So, um, You'll need probably between two and say five uh, tablespoons. So what I do is like add about half, a, a couple tablespoons to begin with of your milk. Of course, if you found it a little too soft, you could also just add a little flour to kind of get that right consistency. 
but it's always good to start with a, the less amount and then just add more. Can't take it away. So, so that is still, as you can see, a little too dry. So I am going to add all of it. Move this out of the way. And like, like any uh, scone or biscuit dough, you don't want to overhandle your dough because, you know, then it gets a little tough, which we don't want our Welsh cakes. We want them nice and soft on the inside. So I'm just going to work this with my hands. If you had made, uh, like I said, cut the butter in and did that part in the food processor, I would still, once you cut the butter in, then put it in a bowl and do the add the egg and the uh, milk by hand like I'm doing here because that way you really can feel the dough and you can tell and you don't overwork it. The tendency to, in a food processor is to over process. So now, is that? So now just take a little flour because we're like I said we're going to roll this out and cut out rounds. So I'm just work it a bit, make sure everything's all mixed in. And then you want to roll it till it's about uh, a quarter inch thick, half a centimeter. I mean, it's not um, critical, but uh, you want to, you don't want them too thick because it'll take too long when you put them on the griddle and then the outside will um, cook too fast and the inside will be a little raw. So I, I would say about a quarter of an inch, half a centimeter. And just as, as you can see, I'm, I'm turning it, lifting it and turning it because I don't want it sticking to my surface. And then just, you know, flour your rolling pin. Okay, that looks about right. Beautiful dough to work with. So as you can see, it's not sticky. You know, a lot of times a, a scone dough is really sticky. This isn't. More like a cookie dough. So then I'm going to take, like I said, I would take somewhere a two to two and a half inch um, round cookie cutter. You can use a glass, top of glass. It's about, you know, five to six centimeter, and then just cut out your rounds. Once you've cut them all out, just um, gather up your dough and re-roll it and cut out the remaining ones. So, now clean up just a bit here. So now I'm using a griddle that actually has a temperature gauge on it. If you have that, then set it to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. If you're using um, a frying pan, medium, medium, high heat. Of course, just like pancakes, you gotta, you might want to just um, cook one to start if this is the first time, just to get a feel for how long your temperature, get familiar with uh, what you're doing. So what I do is I like to put a little butter on there. That'll help with the browning. And then just space them on here. Now what we're going to do is cook them on one side till they're nice and golden brown on the bottom. 
and then flip them over and cook the other side. Now, with my griddle, uh, you know, everybody's pan is going to be a little different. I find it takes about three minutes a side. Again, um, depending on yours, it may take a little more, a little less. So you might want to start with one and then check it. But what you want to make sure is you don't overcook them so that uh, then the insides are going to be dry. And then you don't want to undercook them and then you have a doughy inside. So it's just, you know, you got to kind of play with it and practice. So I find about three minutes, get it nice and golden brown on the bottom side. Okay, so we'll just give this a check. Okay, that looks good. So just flip them. That looks good. Nice golden brown. Just like you would do a pancake, same sort of thing. Okay, so now I'm, like I said, I find another three minutes on this side. What you're looking for, you can kind of feel the sides. Like if I feel them right now, it's like really, really soft and doughy. You still want them, when they're done, you don't want them completely hard. You want it still a little give, and that way you know that the inside's still going to be soft because you don't want to over-bake uh, them. Now, what I like to do at this point is I like to just sprinkle a little extra sugar on top. Some people like to, um, once they're cooked, they like to um, sift a little powdered sugar over top. Or you could not do that and just, um, some people like to add a little, just slather them with some butter and maybe jam or clotted cream. But I just like them plain, so a little sugar. So there we go. And that'll kind of melt a little into that, the tops. Okay, so, so what I do is I feel the sides. There's still a little bit of a give, but they're not like really soft and mushy. And as you can see, the bottom is golden brown. So just take them off, put them on a wire rack. And then just um, add a little more butter and continue on, cook the rest. I will, I'm going to do that because, and then I'll let these cool just a bit because they're kind of hot to handle. And then I'll uh, split one in half and show you the inside. So I'll just show you the inside of one. See, as you can see, it's nice and soft. But it's not doughy. You don't want it, the raw dough, but it's still nice and soft. So these are really good warm they, um, or at room temperature. You can, like I said, serve them like this. You could have them with butter, jam, clotted cream, even maybe some lemon curd. And you can cover and store these for several days, or you can even freeze them. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. <music>